Hi everybody, good morning and welcome. This is Dylan with Ellis Home and Garden in Longview. Um, I hope everybody is having a great day. I know everybody's probably getting ready for Thanksgiving, but I wanted to take this opportunity and do a, a video for you guys this week. Our one video we're gonna do this week, I had lots of requests last week while we did our tree video on how to tie a bow. That's been our number one question. So I'm gonna take this opportunity, guys, and show you how to tie a bow using different types of ribbon, different widths of ribbon, and I'm gonna to explain to you guys the best options to use when tying a bow. So, um, guys, as you're watching today, just like with any of our other videos, if you will put your name and where you're watching from in the down bar below, Dina is gonna relay those questions and comments to me while we tie the bow. I know we're gonna have lots of questions, so please, please use this opportunity to ask those questions and I will answer them the best that I can. So again, guys, we are doing a bow tying video today. I'm gonna show you guys how we tie our bow. And I've kinda of got organized here. I'm gonna have Dina scan below and show you what we have done. I have paired ribbons in sections here on um, the different type of ribbons I'm gonna do. So as you can see in this first stack here, I've got kind of a, a Santa theme going with a red and gold accent, and I've got a two and a half, or a, a one inch ribbon with a two and a half inch ribbon below. I've got more of a peppermint with a black and red accent here, traditional set, red, green, and gold, and then whimsical down here on the end with some swirl, some uh, season's greeting ribbon, and some happy holidays. So again, these are four different sets that we're gonna do. I'm gonna show you how to stack ribbons, how to tie an individual bow, and how to do all kinds of stuff. So again, if you're joining us, and as you watch this video, guys, it is our most requested how to tie a bow, please put your name and what you're watching from in the down bar, and I'll do the best I can to answer these questions. So we're gonna start with these three different types of ribbons. I'm gonna kinda explain the differences, and I'm gonna show you guys how to tie a single bow, and then we're gonna escalate from there and go up. So. This is one of our Christmas ribbons, guys. This is a 10-yard roll, and I'm gonna remind everybody, our ribbon right now is 50% off. Great time to come in and take advantage of those sales. And guys, any ribbon that we do have that is available online, I'm gonna have Rebecca tag it in the comment section below. So you can click on that link, and you can it'll direct you to our website at ellishumangarden.com, and it will show you the ribbons that we have on our website. And I have a list here, and we do have 12 different ribbons that are on our website available at ellishumangarden.com, so make sure you check those out. All right, so we're gonna start off here with just a basic ribbon. <clears throat> and this is gonna be our uh, two and a half inch red and lime striped Christmas ribbon. Now, to start off tying your bow, you wanna establish how long you want to keep your tail on your bow. Some people like to use bows for tree toppers. Some, some people like to enhance their tree with bows inside the tree. Some people like to put them on garlands and wreaths. So it all depends on where you're gonna put the bow and the location of the bow is gonna be on how long the tail is gonna be. So for this practice run, we're gonna just leave the tail right here, probably about six inches. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to bunch it together. This is the very, this is the most important part. Whether you're left or right-handed, decide which one you wanna hold your ribbon with. I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna hold it with my right hand. And I'm gonna bunch this ribbon together with my right hand, guys. And then you're gonna make your first loop. Now as you do this, remember, the bigger the loop that you make in your bow, the bigger the bow is gonna turn out. So here we made a, a loop. This is probably about a foot long, so 12 inches long. We've made a loop, and we're gonna bunch it together in our hand, okay? So whatever you bunch together in your hand, I've used my thumb and my pointer finger. Do not let go of that. You wanna make sure you hold and secure that the whole time so that you do not let go and you don't lose shape of your bow. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're going to twist, because the reason you wanna twist, because if you don't, when you do your next loop, your ribbon will not match. So you wanna twist, and put it the right way. And guys, to make sure your loops are even, you wanna pull them up like this and make sure they're together. Because see, if you do it too long and you pull them up, you'll, you can tell a difference like that. So make your loop, your second loop, pull it together, and then bunch it underneath your hand. And you're gonna twist again. So that right there, guys, is how you really tie a bow. That is the, the two main steps. And I'm gonna tie this off with the pipe cleaner. So we made a two loop bow. I'm gonna take a pipe cleaner. You can use wire, guys, but I like pipe cleaner better because it doesn't slip. So I use a pipe cleaner, and I'm gonna put that exactly where my hand is. And make sure you hold that very tight as you tie it off so you don't lose grip on your bow. So I'm gonna twist that off, and then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm going to clip that other tail. All right, guys, so we have started with a very simple two-loop bow. And if you're just joining us, I wanna remind everybody, guys, we are doing a, a bow tying video today, so please put your name and where you're watching from in the down bar and any questions or comments that you may have, and I'll answer those the best that I can during this video. 
All right, so this, this two-loop bow that I showed you is great to practice on, okay? This isn't the most attractive bow. These are great to put in a garland or a wreath or something that you can put a poinsettia and nest in the middle of it to make a great foundation for a flower or something like that. But this is a great way to practice. And guys, just like with anything, practice makes perfect. And so you want to make sure that you, you get some ribbon. Say you have some old ribbon in the attic or something that has wire. That's another very important thing. Make sure all of your ribbon that you use to tie your bows for decorating has wire in it. Because if it does, you can shape it and you can pull it in any direction and it stays where you, where you pull it. So again, this is a two-loop bow. I'm going to do another two-loop bow with a different kind of ribbon and show you guys once again, this is the best way to practice. And once you have this technique down and you can do a two-loop bow, you can go on from there and you can, um, you can do you know, two to four to six loop bows and you can stack ribbons, which we will do um, as we continue this video. So I'm going to lay this here, guys, and let Dina show you that up close. Again, this is a two-loop bow. It's not the most attractive, but it is the best way to practice on how to tie a bow. And if I had to guess, this is probably a yard and a half to two uh, yards of ribbon in this bow here. All right, so we're gonna to move to a different kind of ribbon and we're gonna do the same process, guys. So if you're just joining us, we are doing a bow tying video and we are starting off with just a single two loop bow. It's the best way to uh, practice. If you've never tied a bow before, it's always start. It's always best to start out simple before you excel into something um, you know, much more complicated. So again, the first thing you wanna do is establish how long you want your tail to be on your bow. So again, we're gonna do our, our tail here about six inches to 12 inches long. You're gonna bunch, the bunch it together, okay? And you know, whichever hand, uh, if you're right or left-handed, I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna use my right hand. I'm gonna use my, my thumb and my pointer finger to bunch that. And then you're gonna, set, you're gonna real, uh, figure out how long you want your loop to be. Okay, and guys, again, the bigger the loop that you make, the bigger um, the bow is gonna turn out. So we're gonna bunch that together, and as you can see, we have our loop and this is a smaller ribbon and then we're going to twist and make our next loop Cheryl Hobbs asked do you put something in the center of the bow to cover the pipe cleaner hi Cheryl um, you don't um, you can make a center in your bow but I don't necessarily like to do that I'll show you how to do that uh, as we continue this video but the reason you see the, the pipe cleaner in that video, it's just a simple two-loop bow, and we're just doing this for practice. But as we um, continue, and as we add more ribbons and stack more ribbons in our bow, you won't really see it because the bow is gonna be much fuller. So this right here, we're just starting out with a simple, basic process on how to tie a bow, and then we're gonna kinda excel from there. So thank you for your question, and thanks for watching, Cheryl. I hope you're having a good day, and I'm sure you're getting ready for Thanksgiving tomorrow. I'm ready to eat, not that I need to. But anyway, so uh, we have made again our two loop bow. And uh, guys, again, we started off with one loop, we twisted, we made our next loop, we twisted again, and we're gonna take our scissors, and again, never let go of where you have your fingers holding this ribbon, because your bow will fall apart. So we have another two loop bow, we're gonna take a pipe cleaner, and we're going to tie that off exactly where we have it, pinched together. And guys, these tulip bows are great to put um, on a wreath or a garland and put a poinsettia in the middle. They make a great nesting for that poinsettia. And as you'll see, we did something similar in our mantle series videos that we did a couple weeks ago. And you can find those videos on our Facebook page um, at Ellis Home and Garden. And guys, I want to start taking these videos on the road. So as I go do interior design videos, I want to take them on the road. So like us on Facebook and check us out on Instagram because we can do live videos on Instagram as well. And that's something I definitely want to explore. So check us out on Instagram at Ellis Home and Garden. Like us and share us. Do what? I'm going with you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I don't need to be having no wreck. Um, okay, guys. So again, this is a two-loop bow. Okay, and the reason we're doing this is because I just want to show you how to uh, tie a bow um, if you are a beginner and you've never done this before. So this is the best way to do it. So just start out doing two-loop bows and just keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. Practice makes perfect. And once you get this technique down, you're just going to repeat this technique and add more ribbons of your choice to create a big, beautiful bow of your choice uh, for whatever decorating project that you're doing. All right, so I'm gonna lay these beside each other so you can kind of see the resemblance. So I'm gonna come around and let her zoom in on these. So we have two different ribbons. They're both wired ribbons, guys. So they're both Christmas ribbons. This is a red and a lime green, and they both have wire in them. All of our Christmas ribbon is 50 off. And again, the reason that we have done these simple bows, they're not the most flattering, but it's the best way to learn how to tie a bow because 
um, you can use this technique and we're going to use this as we go and as we excel into um, different ribbons, different sizes and, and much more like that. I need to put these down before I shake myself with them. Okay, so um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move along to a uh, to another type of bow which is going to be our, our stacked bow. So we're going to do two uh, ribbons and we're going to stack them on top of each other. So I'm going to start guys using these two right here. And as you can see I have two different size ribbons. I have this Santa belt ribbon and I have this red and this gold ribbon. And I love to use different types of ribbon. It makes a great impact in your tree or in your design and it really enhances your design. So if you're using, if you're making an arrangement guys or if you're decorating a tree like we have here, we've enhanced this tree and enhanced these picks with this beautiful ribbon and we've used three different ribbons so we've done a triple stack bow here and I'm going to show you guys how to do this in this video but uh, we're going to start now with our double stacked bow so again I've used two different sizes of ribbons I have the Santa belt ribbon and the red and gold you want to make sure whatever ribbons that you use they correspond with each other so as you can see here I'm going to have Dina scan back here all these stacks that I have together correspond with each other. So as we do this video, I'm going to be tying bows out of these in these stacks. They all correspond. So again, this is whimsical, this is traditional, this is black and white peppermint, and this is going to be red and gold with a little bit of fun Santa belt at the top. And a lot of people ask me, guys, how you pick your ribbon and what coordinates with each other. And it's always fun to mix them. So um, one ribbon is so boring. So I like to add several into my tree and several into my design. And I just take a ribbon of my choice to say I took this one, it's a pattern of red and gold. Say so this is the first one you picked up and you loved it. And then I find another ribbon, guys, it's, all, it's a different size or it's a solid, but it's, some of, it's gotta have some of these colors in the other ribbon. So in this Santa belt ribbon, I have both red in here and I have the gold belt and there's gold in this as well. And it's always important too, you don't always have to do this and we're not gonna do that every time today, but if you do use a busy pattern, it's always good to offset it with a solid. So, like this is a stripe ribbon, you could also put a solid red or a solid gold behind it as a backdrop and it would look really good as well. All right, so we're gonna start doing our double stack bow here with our Santa belt ribbon. Guys, if you're just joining us, we are coming to you from Ellis Home and Garden in Longview. We had lots of requests for this video. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day and watching with us, guys. If you have any questions or comments while we do this video, please take advantage of this time and ask me anything. Put your name and your questions and comments below in the down bar, and Dina's gonna relay those to me. All right, so now we're gonna figure out uh, how long you want your tail again. We're gonna start with the first ribbon that we're gonna do, and we're gonna stack as we go back. So we're not gonna have our tail very long on the first, um, first ribbon we're gonna leave it probably about four to five inches long we're gonna bunch it just like we did at the beginning and we're gonna use that same technique guys okay we're gonna make our first loop bunch it together and twist and again if you're just watching the reason that we twist is because if you don't then your pattern will not be on that side so we're gonna twist so your pattern will match just like that all right so in the previous uh, bow this is where we stopped, but we're gonna keep going one more time and we're gonna do three loops. As If you watch any of my videos, you know I like to do things in odd numbers. I don't always do them in odd numbers, I forget sometimes, but when I do ribbons and stuff like that, I do try to do odds. So I'm gonna make one more loop and I'm gonna tie it off or uh, twist it just like that. So as you can see, I have three loops here, guys, of the Santa belt ribbon. I'm gonna leave the tail about as long as that loop and I'm gonna cut it with my scissors. And as I'm doing all of this, do not ever let go of your fingers that are holding this ribbon together because it's very important you hold this or your bow will fall apart. And you make sure you hold it very secure because you, if you let it loose and you start pulling on your uh, ribbon, it will pull it apart and it'll just be a mess. So make sure that you hold on to it very tightly. Allison okay. Gillenting, I'm sorry if I oh, mispronounced I love her. it. Hey, Gallison. Does all the ribbon have wire? Yes, all the ribbon has wire. You want to make sure you uh, use ribbon with wire because if you don't, then it flops around and it doesn't shape well. So as you can see, if it's got wire in it, you can um, shape it and pull it any way that you want to. All right, so this is the first layer of our double stack bow, guys. So we've got, this is a smaller ribbon. It's a one and a half inch ribbon. I think, I'm telling everybody that. Yeah, one and a half inch ribbon. So now we're going to take our next ribbon, which is this red and gold. And again, the reason I've chosen this is because it corresponds with this ribbon. It's got the red and the gold in it, just like the red and the gold in this belt and on this ribbon here. All right, so 
So now we're gonna take our next ribbon. Again, we've never let go of this, and we're gonna lay it on top of this ribbon. And as I'm doing that, I'm using my middle finger and I'm just laying it on there just like that. All right, so now I've got it in there as well and I'm holding that all with my pointer and my uh, thumb just like I was before. It's very important you don't let that go. And now we're gonna make our loop. And as we're doing these bows, guys, I'm making the loop a little bit bigger each time. So if you can look really closely, you'll see I've got the first loop, I've got the second loop, which is a little bit bigger, and then the third loop. So I'm doing a little bit bigger each time. I'm gonna bunch that together and twist it so that my pattern comes back to the front. And then I'm gonna do my next loop. And I'm gonna bunch again. And this time, and we're just repeating that same pattern that we did in that two loop bow. So that's why I wanted to show you guys at the beginning how we did that two loop bow just um, for beginners. And now we're gonna continue and keep going. Guys, if you have any questions while we're doing this, Please put your name and where you're watching from and any questions in the comment bar and we will do the best we can to answer those questions for you while we're on this video. Alright, so we're going to twist one more time and as you can see we now have four loops on there. So now we're going to take our scissors, again you never let go of that center and we're going to cut our tail. We're going to take our pipe cleaner. And guys, if you don't like pipe cleaners, I love pipe cleaners. The reason I like these over wires is because they don't slip. So you can uh, really get a good grip on this. We're gonna place it where our thumb is in the bow without letting go. And again, you can see how this is mashed together. You want it because I've been putting pressure on that the whole time and keeping it secure. All right, so we're gonna put our thumb back where that is and tie this off really well. All right, and then you come to this point. And a lot of people get discouraged at this point because they say, oh, I've tied the bow, but then they don't know what to do next. And also, I've seen this on Reese and stuff like this, and um, people, you know, they always say, I don't still know what I did wrong, and they didn't do anything wrong. They just uh, haven't fluffed the bow. And so all you're gonna do is you're gonna alternate sides. So you're gonna take one side and pull it up, and one side and pull it down, and alternate that on each side. All right, guys, so check this out. This is gonna be our um, double stacked bow. I used two different kinds of ribbons, okay? I used the Santa belt ribbon, I did three loops, and I continued with the red and gold stripe ribbon on the back and did four loops. So I've got seven loops total. I left the tails a little bit long, so I've got these stragglers hanging out there, which I like that look as well. This would be a great size bow right here to nest in your tree, in your garland, or in your wreath. And as you can see the difference here, so we've got our two loop bow, which I showed you. And the reason I showed you this is because I just want to show you the technique that we use to tie the bow. And we're going up in size. So we've got our single bow, and now we've got our double bow with two different kinds of ribbons. And guys, I've used two different patterns here, but you can easily do, and I've used two different sizes as well, one and a half inch and a two and a half inch. But you can easily do this with any type of ribbon that has wire in it for the holidays, for spring, for fall, for Valentine's Day. And you can use any type of pattern or solid. So I've used two different patterns here, but you can definitely put a solid behind this as well of your choice. Donna Matthews Abercrombie, can you use zip ties? Hi Dawn, I miss you. I haven't seen you in forever. You can use zip ties. <clears throat> you can even use a rubber band, whatever you really have. But um, I like to use pipe cleaners because they don't slip. Or um, I've gone into a crunch before and I've used... Um, like a bread tie, like at home, like a twist tie off the bread. I grabbed it off the bread one time, and I've used that as well. Whatever you can find that can really put a good grip on there. All right, guys, so that is our double stack bow, and now we're going to go into our triple stack bow. But before we do that, I want to show you guys one more tip on how to dovetail. But before I do that, I'm going to have Dina scan up on this one more time. All right, so now I'm gonna show you guys how to finish off your ribbon. It's very important that you finish off your ribbon when tying your bows. So uh, you can angle it or you can dovetail it. So I'm gonna show you how to do both techniques here. And you don't always have to do it. I angle mine a lot of the time, but if you're doing a bow and it's really making a big statement in the piece that you're doing, it's important to, make, uh, to finish off your ribbon. So we're gonna take this bow here, guys, for example. And if it's 
you'll see most of the time your ribbon is going to be straight across when you get done like this. And to finish it off, you can just take it, like for this piece of example, for this, uh, and you can just do it at an angle. And that will just help finish off your bow and really make it look nice. And you can also do what, what they call a dovetail. You can take the ribbon, fold it in half, okay? So again, I've just taken the ribbon, folded it in half, and then take your scissors and cut it at an angle. And then they call that a dovetail, and that's really pretty finish um, on your bow as well, or any ribbon. And see, with that wire, you can bend your ribbon like that, and it really uh, makes it pretty and really finishes it out well. Tina Bowers from Minden, Louisiana. Hi, Tina. Do you have your runners mixed in the bow even if you use several different ribbons? Yes, I do, Tina. If you'll, uh, as we continue and as I add more and more ribbons, I'll show you how we do that. And if you'll watch, I like the runners and I do trim them so that they're about the same length as the, as the loops in the bow. But I do like that because it just adds some variety in the bow as well. Allison asked, when you nest your bows in a tree, do you actually attach them with the pipe cleaners? Yes, so you take the pipe cleaner on the back of the, of the bow and you nest it up in the tree. For example, here's one that we did here. Um, last week in our tree video and I want to remind everybody that you want to nest it up into the tree into the branches And you don't put it on the edge because you don't want to lose the shape of the tree So this one we use three different types of ribbon We took that pipe cleaner on the back of the bow and we actually nested it into the tree And you do the same thing with the wreath or garland you take this pipe cleaner and you nest it onto the onto the thing All right guys, so now we're gonna move on to our triple stack bow so we're gonna use these three ribbons here. So this is more of a fun, whimsical theme. We've got the solid, like I was telling you before, a peppermint a snowman ribbon, and then a black and white polka dot. So um, I've got two different sizes. Again, the one and a half inch and the two and a half inch. This is an everyday ribbon that we offer, and these are Christmas ribbons. And all of our Christmas ribbons are 50% off. So it's, again, it's a great time to take advantage of that. All right, so we're gonna start out uh, with our smallest ribbon on top. And as you uh, start off, just like with any other project, you wanna make sure you uh, have everything organized, kinda of like we do here. And I'm gonna do this bow in this, um, actually, I'm gonna change this, like this. I'm gonna put the solid in the middle of these two patterns to break it up. So we're gonna start with this polka dot. We're gonna start just like we did with any of them. Okay, we're gonna do about a four to five inch tail. We're gonna bunch it together in our hand, make our first loop. And then again, we're gonna make sure you hold it very uh, tight. We're gonna twist it. And then we're gonna make our next loop. Twist again, make our next loop. So we're gonna do three loops on top again with our tail. And again, as we cut this off, you wanna make sure that you hold this very tightly and secure it. That way your bow keeps its shape and it does not fall apart. And as I'm cutting these guys, I do cut them at an angle, so it kind of helps you in the end. And a very important tip also is that you have sharp scissors because there's nothing worse than doing this with dull scissors. Oh my God, it makes me want to drink. So make sure that you have um, some sharp scissors when you do this. All right, so now we're going to get our solid. And this is a two and a half inch ribbon. Again, this is wired. It's kind of got a metallic finish on it. And we're going to nest that right behind this black and white. As you can see, this black and white really pops off of that red metallic. So it's important in your ribbon selection and your ribbon choices to pick something that really shows up um, in your uh, design that you're working on. So just a reminder, as I'm doing these loops, guys, I make them a little bit bigger each time. Okay, so I started with this one, made the second loop a little larger, and then the third loop, this red uh, metallic ribbon, I'm making a little larger. Okay, I'm gonna bunch it together, twist it, make my next loop and I'm gonna repeat that pattern guys so twist make your loop bunch it together and twist again so we're gonna do four um, four loops so this is where we stopped on the last bow guys on the double stack bow we had seven loops so this is where I'm at now and we're not gonna do anything different except for add a different ribbon. So keep your hand exactly where it is. We're gonna cut that tail just like we did before. And we're gonna move along to our third and final ribbon on this bow. And it happens to be a fun snowman print. 
And because it is my third and final ribbon, I'm gonna leave the tail a little bit longer on that one. And I'm just gonna put it behind there again, pinch it off, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna start uh, making my loops. Again, I made it a little bit longer than that um, red loop there. Okay, twist, make your next loop. Just like that. And you're just gonna repeat this process. And these triple stack bows, guys, are a great way to um, use up any ribbon that you might have that, that is old or that you're running out of. So as you can see, I didn't have a full roll of ribbon when I started here. I just had, um, I've got enough to do three loops. And that's fine because as you nest these in the tree, you're really not going to notice exactly how many loops you have. And so these triple loop bows are a great way to use up any ribbon that you might not have. And don't throw away any ribbon that you have that you just have a little bit on because you can put one or two loops um, of the ribbon that you have left over in this bow and use it up and get use out of it for that year. All right, so now we're gonna twist that off and we have completed our three-tiered, uh, three three-tiered, three-stack bow. And we're gonna take our pot cleaner and we're gonna place it where our thumb is again. And we're gonna twist it off. And again, you don't have to use a pot cleaner, guys. You can use wire, you can use zip ties, you can use um, anything. You just wanna make sure it is a strong hold. So again, as you fluff the bow, you wanna take uh, each loop and pull them on alternate sides. Judy Maine, what are you doing when you say twist? Hi, Judy. Give me just a minute and I will show you. Thanks so much for watching today. All right, guys, so as you can see here, we have done our um, triple stack bow. We started with this one and a half inch uh, polka dot black and white ribbon with this. Uh, we went ahead next with our metallic red two and a half inch ribbon and finished off with this black and white snowman ribbon. Again, like before, we're gonna finish off our ribbon by angling the tails on each one. And this right here is a great size bow for a tree, a wreath, a garland, anything. You can take this bow, use the existing pipe cleaner, and you can nest this into a tree, into a garland, or into a wreath, guys. So I'm gonna lay these here and I'm gonna show you, have Dina show you the difference in sizes. So we started here at the beginning. Let's go over here. We started with our two loop bow. If you'll rewind to the beginning of this video, if you're still having trouble at the um, end when you start to do your own bows, this is a great technique to use when learning how to tie a bow if you're a beginner. So use this technique, um, use different types of ribbon, practice because some ribbons are stiffer than others, whether you use a burlap ribbon, a nylon, a metallic ribbon. And then we worked up to our double stack bow here, guys. So we used a uh, one and a half inch ribbon and we went behind it with a two and a half inch seven loops and then we continued here guys with a triple stack bow we've got three different types of ribbon on it and again we finished off this ribbon by cutting the tails at an angle and then on this one here I showed you how to dovetail the bows and if you're just joining us I'll show you one more time you take your ribbon and you just fold it in half and then you cut it at an angle and it puts a, a good finish on your bow. Gives it a finishing look. So again, I'm gonna have her go up one more time before we move on to show you that what we started with and what we're up to now. Guys, if you have any questions, again, while we're watching this video, please put your name, where you're watching from, any questions or comments that you have in the down bar. And guys, as we're approaching Christmas and as we're getting closer, I wanna keep doing these videos and stuff, so put any uh, requests that you have in the down bar below, and I'm gonna see what I can do to get those videos and keep going because we have done, um, just to remind everybody, we've done a mantle series video, we've done a tree from top to finish, top to bottom, and now we're doing the bow tying video. And this bow tying video was a main request that we had. So any requests that you have, guys, put those on there. I also had a request for a front door. So we're gonna see what we can do to get that on the books and get that in. Make sure you like us on Facebook and on Instagram for any updates and um, sign up for our email. We'll put all that information on there to keep you guys updated. Cindy Henderson, can you show us how to tie a flat bow? Uh, I think what she's talking about is maybe this, because you can keep this flat, Cindy, if you 
pull the loops down. You don't have to keep them fluffed. And that's the good thing, guys. That's a good question because if you've got wired ribbon, you don't necessarily have to keep them fluffed up like that. You can pull them flat. So I'll go over that one more time. You can take a ribbon of your choice. And I'm also going to go, whoever asked about the, uh, the twisting, I'll go over that too. So you want to establish how long you want your tail. Okay. And when I say twist or bunch your row, you want to um, bunch the ribbon together like this in your hand. And the reason you do that is because you want to keep a secure spot on where you start. You're going to make your loop and, when I, and you're going to bunch it together. And the reason that you twist is that you want your ribbon to face the correct side. So I'm going to have Dina get close so you can see. So if you do not twist your ribbon, if you do your next loop, if you can see, the pattern is not on the right side of the ribbon, it's backwards. So you twist your ribbon around so that you get the pattern on the right side, just like that. And as far as the flat bow goes, as you finish this off, you tie this off, you can just press the loops down and it, it creates a flat, flat bow. So again, the technique that I just used, guys, I, this time I used a larger ribbon and I made larger loops. It's a great way to for beginners on how to practice and how to get good at tying the bows. So you can lay them flat like that if you wanted to do a flat bow. All right, guys, so now I'm going to show you an easy way to incorporate two different kinds of ribbons into a bow. And I'm going to use, let's see, I'm going to use these two ribbons here. We've got a green with kind of like a diamond shape on it and then a swirly gold. So, again, we started off with a single um, single ribbon bow. We've gone to a double and then a triple stack bow. And we're going to use two different ribbons here, guys. And I'm going to show you how to make an, a quick and easy bow using two different kinds of ribbons. And we're going to do this by overlapping them. And it's only going to take one step. We're going to use the same technique we've used, but one step. And we're going to do it all at one time. This Shannon, works. Sorry, it's okay. Shannon Reynolds, how many loops do you suggest for a topper on a tree? Hi, Shannon. Um, depending on what size tree it is. So if it's a seven and a half foot tree, I would do. Um, and also, speaking of tree toppers, I'm glad you brought that up. I don't like to make one bow and put it on the top of the tree because it looks unproportionate. So I like to make two bows. And for example, you need one bigger than this, but I like to make two bows, okay? and put them back to back on the tree and then kind of pull them together where they blend because I find that that makes a much fuller topper on the top of your tree. Um, so for a seven and a half foot tree, I would probably do maybe a, a 10 yard bow on each side. So that's probably gonna be 15 to 20 loops on each side. And I would stack the, stack the ribbons, I would do multiples. So here I've used a smaller ribbon and I've gone back behind it with a larger one and a half inch to two and a half inch. But you can also put a four inch ribbon behind and then leave your streamers much longer, your tails on your ribbon much longer. And because they're wired, guys, you can actually take this and curl it with your hand like this. And if they're much longer, see how, see how that curls? You can curl them down the end of your tree. So that's a great question for the tree topper. All right, so now to do a double bow, guys, quick and easy way, using two different ribbons, we're going to actually overlap them. Okay, so we're going to lay them here. And a lot of the time, I just let them drop on the floor. So that's another thing, guys. When you do your ribbon and when you tie your bows, don't uh, worry about holding this in your hand or put it in your lap because it's just a pain. You want to make sure that you just let go, let go of that ribbon, let it do what it wants to do, and all you're worried about is what's in your hand at the time. Okay, so to do this, it's going to be a quick way um, to do a bow, a full bow, using two different ribbons. And it's best that we only use this technique with two ribbons because the thicker the bow gets and the more ribbon, the harder it is to hold in your hand. And you can do it, but your hand starts cramping after a while. So you want to make sure that you just do this technique that I'm showing you right now with two different ribbons. So we're going to hold these on top of each other just like this. Just like with uh, the previous bows, we're going to establish how long we want our tail. And on this one, I'm going to do it about a foot long. We're going to bunch it together to start off and we're going to um, start tying. So we're going to make our first loop. And guys, I'm not doing anything different other than I've got two ribbons laying on top of each other. Okay? So I'm going to make my first loop. I'm going to twist. And I'm going to continue. And I'm going to knock those off on the floor like I was telling you about. Because it's easier that way. Alright, I'm going to make my next loop. 
And guys, if you're worried about making one side bigger than the other, you can actually pull them up as you go, just like this, and you kind of measure. So if you do one side larger, kind of like this, and you pull it up, you can actually see, and that way you can kind of get yourself in line as you go, and you don't, uh, you know, finish your bow and have an outcome that you're not happy with. So we're going to twist again. And we're going to continue making our loops. And guys, don't get discouraged. Some of your ribbon will get off track like this. You just move it over with your hand and be patient. That's most important. And I don't have any patience, so if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to continue. And the best thing about this technique that I'm showing you guys is you're getting double the ribbon in the same amount of time. So see, if we were doing this with just one ribbon, you'd have four loops by now. But by the end of this, we already have eight loops because if I pull this apart, you've got eight loops here. So we're going to continue. And guys, as you're watching this, if you have any questions or comments, put your name and where you're watching from in the down bar. And Dina's going to relay those to me through this video. Even if it's not about this bow, if it's about Christmas decorating, take advantage of this time, guys. I love to interact with you, and I've loved meeting all of you. So thank you so much for watching my videos, and uh, thank you for following Ellis's page. And I love meeting you guys in the store. Mary and Chartron, sorry if I mispronounced it. Hi, Just Mary. Watching from Quebec, Montreal. Wow. I wonder what the weather's like there. All right, guys, so now we have done one, two, three, four loops on each side. So that's eight, but really we have 16 loops because we've got two different ribbons. So, so you really get the most for your time doing this technique. So now we're gonna take our pipe cleaner, and again, I've never let go of that center. It's very important. We're gonna take our pipe cleaner, we're gonna place it right in the middle, and we're gonna secure this using that pipe cleaner or a piece of wire of your choice and tie it off really well so that it doesn't come undone. And we're gonna cut our tails off. Let that ribbon go on the floor. All right guys, so the next step in this process is just to fluff out your, your uh, loops on your bow, okay? And I just take them and I just pull them apart and alternate them. So I'm gonna pull the gold on that side. And then on this loop, I'm gonna pull the gold on the right side. So left and then right. And I'm gonna flip it around and do the same thing on this side. Left, and then right. So guys, we're doing a stacked, uh, not a stack, just a blended bow with two different ribbons. 16 loops on this bow. Okay, then I'm gonna take my bow and I'm just gonna shape it. And you're gonna do that by taking the ends of the loops and just pulling them out. And if you tie it off and secured it, that's why you do that. And it's very important so that when you do this and when you shape it and you get to that process, your bow does not fall apart. All right, guys. So, again, this is 16 loop bow. I'm going to put this here so you can see it. Allison asked, how much ribbon should you do for a mantle? A mantle, I would do, five, if it's like a six foot mantle, I would do five. Um, four loop bows. So in that mantle video that I, I had, I showed how to do those things. They're similar to this one here. And you can put these on your mantle in five places and you can put your poinsettias inside of the ribbon and it makes a great foundation for it. Irma so, Williams, are all the loops the same size in this bow? Hi Irma, they are. So on this bow that we did, we used two different ribbons. We uh, laid them on top of each other and they are all the same size. And this is a great size here, guys, to put as a tree topper on a smaller tree, like a seven and a half foot tree. You can make two of these bows, leave your streamers longer, of course, to go down your tree, the length of your tree, and you can back these up on each side of your tree, the front and the back, and it'd make a great tree topper. So I'm gonna see if I can kind of pull this down, and I'm gonna have Dina go down the table and show you guys what we started with and then what we've worked our way up to. So we started with a single ribbon, two loop bow, then we've gone to a double stack bow, a triple stack bow, and then we did a double blended bow with two different ribbons. We use this swirled ribbon and we use this pattern here as well. So guys, again, as we continue, if you have any questions about anything that we're doing, any comments, please put your name where you're watching from in the down bar. I love doing these videos with you and I appreciate you all watching. I know everybody's getting ready for Thanksgiving today, so 
Thanks so much for taking time out and watching. Um, before we continue, let's see, I have a few comments I wanted to put here. I have some notes. Um, a lot of people were asking about floral design classes. We do have floral design classes. We have five classes left for this fall and winter season. Um, once you really get down with these bows and you practice using this tutorial video that I'm showing you, we have beginner bow tying classes, but they're all gone. We've already done those already, but we have an advanced bow tying class on December 9th, Saturday, December 9th from 1 to 4. It's 35 bucks, but you get tons of materials in there and tons of stuff to take home with you. So once you learn how to tie these bows, guys, and you know how to tie a basic bow, you can go and you can really work with a teacher in one of these classes, one of our designers, and they will help guide you uh, to achieve something if you're still having problems. So if you're watching our tutorial videos and you're still having problems and you still need someone to just really kind of help you, we are having an advanced bow tying class on December 9th, but you must know how to tie a basic bow for that class. And again, it's $35 from 1 to 4 on the 9th. And also, we have 12 different styles of ribbon on our website at Ellis Home and Garden. They're available. So, guys, check all that out on our website. And we do have some, like this one right here is available on our website. This um, red and white striped is very popular. We're sold out of this in a, a lot of our stores. So, make sure you check online and get that, especially if you don't live next to one of our stores. Get online and get that. We have this snowman one on there, I know for sure. So check all those out. And guys, we do have five locations. All of that information is on our website at ellishomeandgarden.com. And again, I was telling you earlier, I wanted to take all these live videos on the road. So when I go and do clients' homes, I want to take you guys with me and show you what I'm thinking for when I leave the store and the mess that I make in my car and all the glitter uh, to when I get there and, and what we start with and how the outcome is. So like us on Instagram for that, guys, at Ellis Home and Garden on Facebook. And I'm going to see what we can do to get that working. And Dina already said she wants to go, so I don't have a collision. Because you know you're supposed to be on the phone and driving, even though I do already. All right, guys. Diaz, uh -huh. can you make those with wider ribbon? Yes, you can. You can actually use as wide of a ribbon as you want. So um, I love to use four-inch ribbon um, as a backdrop especially. So like this one, we started off with a one-and-a-half inch, went to the two-and-a-half inch. And then you can actually put a four-inch, four which is about this wide behind this and it makes a great background and then leave the tails longer and weave those into your tree. Uh, actually right here. What was her name? Marisol. Hey Marisol. I wonder if that's Marisol from Hospital. Was it Marisol from Hospital? You don't Marisol, know. Marisol, she didn't put where she's from. Um, here's a four inch here. So this is the wider ribbon and I actually put it on the back of this uh, three loop bow here and I left the tails longer because it was the, the last ribbon that I used and I weave that ribbon throughout the tree. So as you can see a piece there and here's another piece down here, if you can see that one. So, yes, you definitely can do that as well. Jennifer Voss, do you see a lot of people using mauve, pink, and wine colors on their tree? That is very popular. Thank you for the question. Look right here. We have mauve and pink right here. Um, yes, this Victorian look is very popular this year, mixed with some champagne. I don't have any champagne up here, but champagne is like, if you're not familiar, it's a mixture between silver and gold. And if you put that with this pink, it's very popular and it makes a big statement on your tree. We've sold out of this uh, look at our store in Longview. So you might can find some of this on our website or one of our other locations, but it's very, very popular. All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to tie using burlap. And I'm going to explain the difference between the ribbons because I have a lot of people who use burlap in their tree. They do rustic themes, whether it's for fall, because you can use burlap for any season, fall, spring, um, or Christmas. So, of course, right now we're in the Christmas season. I can't believe it's already Thanksgiving. This whole year has flown by. But we're going to talk about burlap. So all of the techniques and all of the things we have done, they're still going to apply to the burlap ribbon, but you cannot do, uh, you cannot stack as many ribbons with the burlap because the material is a lot thicker than like a nylon ribbon or a satin ribbon or something like that. So this burlap is a lot rougher and it's thicker, and then once you bunch it up, it's really thick and hard to hold and pinch together in your hand compared to these other ribbons that we're using here. But we're going to start with this ribbon here. And when you unroll the burlap, guys, this is rough and ragged. And you can see the ends are kind of tethered. And that's what it's supposed to look like. But I like to trim that to clean it up a little bit before we start. And I'm going to show you how to put a center in your bow. For those of you asking, I don't do centers in these larger bows like this one right here because someone asked earlier how to hide the pipe cleaner. As you can see, once you do a fuller bow and you really fluff it and shape your bow, you cannot see the center or see the pipe cleaner. Um, but if you were to do a smaller bow, I'm gonna show you guys how to do that and how to put a center in your bow. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your ribbon and you're gonna have it facing towards you. So if you're holding the ribbon, it's gonna look like this. 
and you're going to make a loop, like a, almost a circle, just like that. So if you can see in there, we're going to make a circle, and this is going to be the center loop in your bow. So if you watched um, previously in this video, guys, and also while we do this step and while we continue, if you have any questions or comments, put your name and where you're watching from in the down bar, and Dino is going to relay those to me. This is where you're going to be bunching your, your uh, bow together. So if you watched our um, previous bows that we have done, you'll notice I always kept my thumb in the middle and always held that. So you're going to hold this right here where you make that loop. All right, so again, if you're just joining us, I took the ribbon, I made a loop, and I'm putting my thumb right there on it. And then I'm going to twist, guys. The reason I'm twisting is because I need my ribbon to face the right direction. All right? So once you have, and this is your center loop, now you're going to begin to make your loops on your bow. So we've made our first loop. We're going to twist just like we've done before. So we're not changing any of the techniques except for that first center loop. You're going to make your second loop. And as you can see, that's going to be your center in your bow. And if you were to do a smaller bow with not too many loops, this is a great way to hide that pipe cleaner like someone asked earlier. We're just going to continue that process. And this part is the same. We've done the same process throughout the other bows. Make your loops and twist. And you can do this same thing with any type of ribbon. It does not have to be burlap. I'm just going to show you the difference between ribbons. And we're going to do three loops on each side using this burlap. Iris Bergeron, do we have any white ribbon for sale? Hi, Iris. Iris, we do. We have some Christmas ribbon that is white, and we also have some um, everyday ribbon that is white as well. So thanks for your question, and thanks for watching today. All right, guys, so now we have finished, and you can make this as thick or as thin as you want, as many loops as you want, but we're just gonna do three. And a lot of people do centers if they do a smaller bow, like, uh, like before, like this one here, because when you do smaller bows, you can see the actual center in the pipe cleaner. So where my thumb is in the middle of this loop, you can take your pipe cleaner, weave it through here, and you're gonna place that, and you're gonna tie this off, just like we've done with the others. Do it really tight and really secure. All right, so if you'll notice, guys, if you've been watching, I didn't start out with the tail. So that's a problem. So now I'm going to show you how to create a tail. So before you cut this, you're going to make another loop. And you're going to place it right underneath that pipe cleaner. Okay? So again, this is what it looks like when you're done. The reason we didn't start out with the tail is because we made that center loop. So we're going to take this one tail. We're going to make a loop out of the ribbon. We're going to place it underneath that pipe cleaner. And then we're going to tie it off. Okay? So can you see that real well? We're just going to tie it off. Linda Mills, are you twisting once or twice? Hi, Linda. I twist several times. So I don't really have a set amount of times, but I would do it three, four, five, six times because you want to make sure whatever you tie is very secure because you're going to move it and shape it and you don't want it to become shuffled. Andrea Shelf, I'm sorry. If the ribbon is double faced, is there a need to twist the ribbon? Yes, you do still want to, uh, to twist, Angela, because you want to, uh, it, it creates a better shape and a better foundation for your bow. All right, guys, so now once we had that loop, we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut right here the remainder of our ribbon. And that loop is going to be your two tails. So you're going to take your scissors and cut that loop in half, and you have your two tails on your bow. Okay, and so now just like before, we're going to take this and we're going to shape it. Move this out of the way and show you guys. So here we have made a six loop bow out of burlap and we have put that center loop in there. And I did the smaller size bow because I wanted to show you guys the difference in the type of ribbon that we have used and um, how to cover the pipe cleaner. Because if you see right there, you can see the pipe cleaner, but I had a question earlier on how to cover it and you can do this center loop. And guys, you can do this not just with this burlap bow, but you can do this with any of these bows that we have done. But I do only use the burlap on the smaller um, bows that I do. And I have these tails that I created. And again, you can dovetail them by 
folding the ribbon in half just like that. And it really makes a great finishing to your bow. Ooh, wrong way. I'm on the right side of the table. Alright guys, and so that is called dovetailing. And if you do not like this, you can always finish off your ribbons by just slicing them um, at an angle. Okay, so I'm going to have Dina go up one more time and show you kind of the variety of bows that we have done so far in the video. If you're just joining us, um, this is Dylan from Ellis Home and Garden. Put your name and where you're watching from today. Any questions or comments that you have, guys, in these videos, I'd love to interact with you and answer those questions, even if it's not about ribbon uh, or bow tying, if it's about Christmas decorating. I know that the holidays are coming up, so please take advantage of this and ask any questions, guys. Um, I want to remind everybody that we did do some other videos. So if you're just the first time you're watching, guys, we've had watchers from all over, and I've loved meeting you in the store. I had a lot of people coming up and talking to me about the videos and how they've helped them. Post and tag us in any stuff, anything that you have made on your um, at your house. So if you've made any wreaths or garlands or trees, and you've taken steps or and stuff from our videos, post those on our Facebook page and on our Instagram and tag us in those. We would love to see. We had some people that have sent us some messages and sent us some photos, and their stuff looks so so good. So I love seeing all of that stuff. And, and so thanks so much for joining us and watching all those. But I want to remind everybody we do have all those videos posted on our Facebook page at Ellis Home and Garden. So we did a three-part mantle series transformation where we started with a blank canvas. We created a beautiful six-foot mantle garland, which was a red and champagne color. We finished with our teardrops and our wreath. And then last week we did this beautiful tree, guys. And again, all this is posted on our Facebook page at Ellis Home and Garden. We started with this tree topper, guys, and then we worked our way down the tree and continued. And again, this is a seven-and-a-half-foot tree, but you can use the same pattern on any size tree that you have. So if you miss any of that stuff, it's all on our Facebook page, Ellis Home and Garden. Donna Mentor, are the classes for advanced bow making at all stores? Yes, we have them at all five stores. Um, again, it's on December night, Saturday, December night. $35 is from 1 to 4. Uh, you must know how to tie a basic bow, but in this class, they're going to really go into depth and detail on how to do all different kinds of bows. And, and um, you get, you know, like one-on-one -on -one, uh training and you know up close with all of that stuff all right so guys I'm going to show you one more uh, type of bow just how to make a small pretty bow for like a package and we're going to use a smaller ribbon so I'm going to use this pink ribbon here that somebody mentioned earlier you can use this for a Victorian look you can mix this pink with any types of colors like champagne or gold or uh, even black would be really pretty so we're just going to make, uh, this This one and a half inch ribbon is really pretty because it makes a full, full bow and you can put this on top of a present and so all of this stuff here I've talked about putting it in trees and wreaths and garlands and decorations but this right here you can actually put on top of a present. So this is going to be our last one Then I'll let you guys get back to getting ready for Thanksgiving. Oh, I cannot wait to eat. I need to be on slim fast. But anyway, <laughs> alright so we're going to start guys with this tail. And we're going to leave it probably about a foot long, okay? And this is really easy to tie with this little this little one and a half inch ribbon because it's not very thick and hard to hold. So this is a good size right here. So we're going to make our first loop, and I made that loop probably about a foot foot long, so 12 inches. All right, so we're going to twist, make our next loop. Guys, if you have any questions or comments, please put your name where you're watching from in the down bar, and I will be sure to answer those while we're on the video. And Rebecca's going to put a link to all the video, I mean all the video, all the ribbon that we have available on our website at Ellis Home and Garden in the comment section below, guys. So if you don't live near one of our stores and you'd like to check out the selection that we have, it's all available. Twelve, We have 12 different kinds of ribbon on our website, and she's going to tag those down there in the down bar. So again, we're just going to keep making our loops and twisting each time that we go. We're using a one and a half inch ribbon with about 12 inch spacing on each of our loops. And I want to remind everybody, if you've got young kids, bring your family out and your friends to take pictures at our store. Santa's going to be in our Longview location Saturday, December night from 10 to 2. We're kind of doing a benefit with, I think, the it's like the shelter. We're going to have lots of animals out here for adoption and stuff like that. So bring your family and your friends out, guys, December 9th, 
No. Mm-mm. What did I say? December 2nd from 10 to 2. I thought it was the 10th. Is it the 10th? Oh, Lord. Is it? <laughs> I think it's the 9th. It's the 9th. December uh, 9th, Saturday, December 9th. All right, so we're going to continue twisting our loops. And as you can see, this is really starting to fill out. And we're getting to the end of our, our ribbon here. So as you get to the end, you're going to keep your hand where that is and secure it, guys. Take a pipe cleaner. And we're going to tie that off in the center. And as I get done, I'm going to also show you guys how to store your bows, too, because I had a lot of questions about that. All right, so now we're going to take this and we're going to fluff it. Again, we're just going to take each, each loop and alternate sides with it. As you can see, this one and a half inch ribbon really makes a full bow that you can put on the top of a package. So see, imagine this little ribbon was your package. You can put that on top of there and it makes a great finishing touch for any package that you have. And you can take the tails and you, you can actually, um, you know, lay them on the package as well and tape them down. So that's a great way to do that. So guys, I'm gonna show you how to store your bows because I had lots of questions on how to store them and how to get the most use, use out of them year after year because um, I found that when I do clients' homes year after year, the most time consuming part is the ribbon and is the bows because if you have to tie bows, it does take a little bit of your time and having those already tied and having them already pre-done before you start your project really helps. So for example, we're gonna start with this bow that we did here. This is the triple stack bow. To store these guys, you're just gonna to wanna to buy those clear tubs or clear, clear containers at Walmart or at Lowe's or somewhere like that. And you're gonna lay your bow flat. And how we shape the bow, you're just gonna put it all back how it was. So you're gonna put all the loops back in, in line. So we're gonna put them straight in a line. And again, this is for storage. All right, guys, so if you can see, I've put them all back in line, just like when I tied the bow. I have pressed them, pressed them down, okay? So this right here is the best way to store your bow. That's why it's very important that you use that pipe cleaner and tie it down so that you can, you can really shape and really fluff and touch your bow and it doesn't fall apart. And as you can see, you can take this bow just like this and you can place it and you can stack several in your storage container and use these year after year. So say the next year comes around and you see this bow, you can take it and you can fluff it. So see, you can turn that bow from a flat bow and you can just shape it with your fingers and that's why we like to use wired ribbon. So we can take it and bend the loops and using this technique to store it, to store your ribbon, it's not going to damage it or crease it or make any, um, you know, scuffs in your ribbon. So as you can see, guys, your your ribbon with that wire in it just fluffs right back up into that beautiful bow that we had before. And I'm going to show you one more with the larger bow. So we had this one as well. So again. We're gonna take it and we're gonna start on the back. And this was that one that we had double stacked, so it doesn't have to be exactly on top of each other, but you wanna put your loops where they're flat. Guys, if you have any questions or comments, um, please put your name and where you're watching from in the down bar below. So again guys, this is storage techniques. You take your ribbon and you flatten out the tails on each side. And then you can stack these inside your storage container. The best thing about this, no creases in your ribbon, it doesn't damage anything, and we have wired ribbon. So all you have to do the next year is take it and fluff it back out and shape your bow and you will be good to go. And then you will not have to use that time again tying your bows year after year. And this is the best way to get the bang for your buck and really uh, get the most use out of your ribbon. Jennifer Voss, do you find that longer or shorter loops make for a fuller look? 
definitely shorter because thank you Jennifer for your question the longer the loop you make and actually I'll show you let me grab some ribbon okay so you know the largest loop I normally make is probably about about that long and that's going to be so maybe a foot and a half um, because if you get any longer um, you can't really hold your shape see they start drooping like that and that's not a good look um, looks like a racetrack <clears throat> but anyway um you want to so you you can make them as large as you want but you got to make sure that it can withstand the wire because even though this river this ribbon is wired it can only withstand withstand so much so so much movement so you want to make sure that you're good on that so again about that big is how much I made it so if you want a really really full bow I would definitely do the loops a little bit smaller because even if you do the loops much larger, it's gonna take lots and lots and lots of ribbon for you to really get that full look that you're looking for. So thank you for your question. Do we have any more? No? All right, guys, well, I wanna thank you so much for watching today. This was our bow tying video. If you guys have any requests on any videos that you would like to see us do here at Ellis, please put those requests in the down bar in the comment section. And guys, as you do your bows, and if you have any questions and you didn't have an opportunity to ask today, put those comments down there and we will go back after this video and we will answer those the best that we can. We will also put a link to our website, Ellis Home and Garden, where you can find the, the selection of ribbon that we do have online if you don't live near our store. So I want to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving and I hope everybody has a great day.